I want to talk this morning about a word titled God is our Father. God is our Father. The book of Genesis chapter 3 and the verse is 8. He said, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Who is they that day? The voice of the Lord. It is Adam and Eve. They heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the coolest of the day. So a time came, a time came to pass that Adam and Eve, they could hear clear the voice of the Lord. A time came that man was having such a great fellowship with Almighty God. So in the coolest of the evening, the Lord God would just come and have fellowship with Adam. And Eve. This is something that is crucial because our state today, we struggle so much. We struggle so much to have fellowship with God. Why? Because they had a separation. And the separation had cost man so much that what we used to enjoy it freely. Today, for some people have become a problem. The Lord God used to come to his people and just in the coolest of the evening, have just that fellowship. My children, how was the day? My children, what did you do? You know, and the Lord was just having such a wonderful conversation with his children. But when sin entered in the garden, that was the time that that fellowship was broken. Let's see that. He said, Adam and Eve, he said Genesis 3, 8, Adam and Eve, his wife, how, you know, they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. What had happened? That the same God that was constantly, every single day, coming to our fellowship with his children, this particular moment the Lord is coming, they could hear his voice as usual, but this time, man is running away from Almighty God. Man is running away from God. They run and hide themselves among the trees of the garden. It is because sin had entered. It is because another eyes have been opened. A spiritual eyes is closed and a physical eyes is open. And they have seen they have seen their nakedness. And they recognize that they don't deserve to be in the presence of Almighty God. So as God is coming, they are running away from the Lord. It is very typical. Every time that man had come short in the glory of the Lord, every time that we come short, we run away from the Lord. We run away from the Lord. When the Lord is seeking for us, we are running away seeking for a place to hide ourselves. Why? Guilty in our conscience. Guilty in heart. Guilty in mind. We know what we have done. When we have sinned, we know that we have committed sin. And we try as much as possible. When the Lord is still coming to our fellowship with us, we are running away from the Lord. 
this is what happened in the garden. And Genesis 3, the verse 23 and 24 says, so as a result of what happened, therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove, God drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden, Cherubims, and the flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Mm. It is very deep because remember, in the garden there were two trees. On one side we have the tree of good and evil. And the other side we have the tree of life. Both trees were in there, just telling the story of what happened. Man decided by the craftiness of the devil to listen to lies. And man fell by eating from the tree of good, knowledge of good, and knowledge of what? Of evil. Man is always after that knowledge. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. They don't want to know about God, but they want to know about everything else. So, man did not go for what will give him life, but man went for what is going to help him to know what is good and what is what, what is bad. Man doesn't like to follow. Man always loves to be boss. I am in control. If man is not in control, he is disturbed. Man cannot take instruction. Man has difficulties to be humble and follow. That is man. The clear proof is that if someone is in habit of doing something, when there is no restriction on that particular thing that he does, the person has no problem to do it all the time. The moment that there is a commandment against whatever that the person is doing, saying that, please, from now onwards, be careful the way that you do this. From that moment that man has heard this, this is the time that man will just take time and start thinking, why did he come and tell me that I should be careful about the way that I do? Is that his business? How I do it? This is what I have been doing for the past 10 years. You see, we start rebelling against instructions. That is man. Man love to be in that control. And that is exactly what happened. When serpent came, serpent told Eve, he said that, had God told you not to eat from the tree? So God said, I yeah, have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, we should take it. It is a lie. God does not want you to know to become like him. That is why. Ah, I see. So God coming to have fellowship with us every evening. It is for the purpose of deceiving us. Because he doesn't want our eyes to be open. That we shall be like him. That is why. It's exactly that. Let me eat. Share it. And this. From that day, this is where the scripture comes in by saying that the Lord God sent them out of the garden when they have disobeyed God, drove them out from the tree of life. The purpose of the tree of life is that when you eat from it, you will remain forever, you live forever. And that was God's will for them. But the question is, why is it? Did God not tell them right away that here is the tree, this is the tree, the Lord told them, it's the tree of knowledge, of good and 
evil thou shalt not eat. But the tree that is over there, it is also a tree of life. But the Lord, the Lord God, did not give any commandments on the tree of life, which means that every other tree, every single thing that is in that garden, it is it was at man's disposal. Man could reach out to it and take anything they need from it without any problem. But we have a problem with the that particular tree that the Lord said. That shall not eat from it. Because the day that you eat from it, ye shall surely die. It wasn't a physical death. Because they had been eaten. And they are still around. Could hear the voice of the Lord in the coolest of the evening coming. But they had to run away and hide themselves behind the trees in the garden. The Lord drove them out. Otherwise, in the state of man, who is now a sinner. And man will go and take from the tree of life and live or keep the state of sinner forever. That is the reason why the Lord drove them out of the garden and placed the cherubim so that these guys are not coming back to have access to the tree of life. The Lord God had a plan when God drove them out of that garden. God had a plan. a plan. If God knew that he was not intended to save them, then the Lord God would have brought them out of the garden. Because after all, what we told them not to do, they have done it anyway. What is it that remained for them? What remained for Adam and Eve is the tree of life. And the purpose of the tree of life is that when you eat from the tree of life, your state, whatever state that you are, if you are in a state of holiness, your state of holiness becomes permanent. It cannot be changed. If you are in a state of the pride, the pride and, and sin, you eat from the tree of life and your state of sin is remaining what? Forever. But God said, I have a plan to bring man to fellowship again. First of all, let me put them out of this garden so I can protect them and one day save them. One day save them. From that very moment, Almighty God ushered forth his plan to save mankind. And that plan was the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 1 21 to 23 says, So the Lord God the whole Old Testament, it was for that purpose. Every single event, happenings, dispensations were all according to what? According to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Something better to come. So in the process of time, the Lord God sent forth an angel to come and visit a young girl, 17 years old, called Mary. And as the Lord sent forth his angel, the angel came and brought a message that verse 21 of Matthew, Mary shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The same sin that we committed in the garden that have been, that have created a distance between God and us. The Lord God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to save us. He said, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. It is wonderful how we can see that God that out of love drove man out of the garden. God out of love brought forth Jesus Christ to bring man to himself. 
that again. This time with power to help man lay and keep his fellowship with him constantly. This time it is going to be a dispensation of God with us, a dispensation of Emmanuel, a dispensation that the Spirit of God is using the temple of a human being. So the body of a human being as the temple of God. God is with us. God dwells in us. God dwells in us. So, John 1 18. Jesus Christ now had come. And the word says that no man had seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. It is very interesting because the Matthew 1 23 that we just read says that, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child, and thus and, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. This was a prophecy at that time. And there was so many prophecies that were given in the Old Testament for the purpose of the coming of Jesus Christ. The people of the Old Testament, they knew God, but they knew Almighty God in a different way. Moses, the word of God says that Moses, God talked to Moses face to face. God talked to Moses face to face. People of the Old Testament were living under the law, so it was a dispensation which is called the dispensation of law. And that dispensation of law is talking about the law of Moses, basically. And the law of Moses, the whole purpose is that if you obey the law, I bless you. If you disobey the law, I also bless you by the curses that are released. Could you believe that uh, a curse could be a blessing? God is always good and cannot do evil. His nature is always good. So when you have disobeyed the commandment of God and curse has come upon you, it is done out of love. Amen. A time is coming that man will find out that even hell is created out of love. As we are all living, who can say that prisons are created out of love? Society, the society would be in trouble, and we have to have a place to keep them, and we have prisons. I believe when someone is there, he said that these people are punishing me, but for the security of everyone else, they said that prison it is good because we can have the peace. It's all out of love. They did know God, talking about the people of the Old Testament, as a God that is like a policeman. God that is always watching over his people. And as they transgress his commandments, he punishes them. That is how the people of the Old Testament knew God. We don't know God that way. Why? Because God has sent for his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus, which is in the bosom of the Father, he came yet to declare who the Father is. Jesus came to declare who the Father is. He said, no man has seen God, said the one that came from the bosom of the Father. There was no revelation of the Father in the Old Testament. As we know of him today, nobody was called the Son of God in the Old Testament. No way. The Son of God. No one in the Old Testament will ever dare to say that I am the Son of God. The, the 
declare. Jesus Christ came with two things. John 1 17 talks about said the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. So Jesus came with the truth that God is not a policeman, but God is a father. God is a father. Matthew 3 and the verses 16 to 17. Jesus Christ, when he was baptized, he went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, let's watch this. In the history of mankind, nothing like this ever happened. Never. Baptism was not something strange because John the Baptist was already, you know, baptizing people. But at the baptism of Jesus Christ, heavens were opened. A door came out. And there is a voice that spoke from heaven saying that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Ah, you see, in Genesis when the Lord said that let us make man in our own image. So then let us now people of the Old Testament view God as the only one. But we know God as the three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. How do we know this? We know this because at this baptism here, a voice that was coming from heaven, that was the voice of the Father. Jesus Christ himself was already in the water being baptized. The voice confirmed that that man in the water it is the is the Son, the second person in the Trinity. And the third person, he said, he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. That is the third person. The Spirit of God. So, you and I have come to a point that our God is three in one. Not only he's a father, but he's a father that has a son. And a father that also has his spirit. Working wonderful things. In the midst of his people. Great revelation ever to mankind. Let us make man in our image. Genesis 1 26. The S is clearly explained here. So when Jesus came in John 14 6, Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Almighty God is addressed here as a Father by Jesus Christ. And he said that he is that way to the Father. That no one has access to the Father except through Him. Except through that way. But it's Jesus. Because He said, I am the way. So nobody come before this God, our Father, except through Jesus Christ. No one has access to the Father except through Jesus Christ. But you know, I have come to a point. In order for one to pray and for your answers, in order for you to receive the answers or for your answers to come, you have to make sure that the Holy Spirit is in your prayers. Amen. In order for one to serve this God and see manifestations from 
the father. You have to know that, number one, whatever that you are doing, you are doing it in the name of Jesus. And number two, the Holy Spirit is also with you. So now I can question myself anywhere that the Trinity is rejected. What type of God are we serving? What God are we serving? Nobody under the Old Testament ever received clear voice from heaven saying that this is my son, the only begotten son, was the one that received that voice. Today, you and I, we are also the daughters and the sons of Jesus. Jesus' father, we are also the daughters and the sons of Jesus' father. Why? Because John 20 and the verse 17 says, Jesus Christ. You know, by the time that Jesus was resurrected and Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene saw Jesus and was just running to touch Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, touch me not. Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren. Isn't that interesting? Jesus Christ is calling his brothers. Go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Please, if you doubt that God is your father, Jesus Christ confirmed and assured you that Almighty God is your father. Amen? If you doubt that Jesus is your brother, Jesus Christ himself said that, Mary, go tell them they are my brothers and my sisters. If Jesus Christ's father is gone, and you are a sister and brother to Jesus, automatically God is your father. Amen. Amen. It is very important because now, it changes everything. It changes everything. The love of a father for the child is greater than the love of a professional person that is keeping you. When someone is being paid to keep your children, their love cannot be compared to the parents' love. The same thing. Which means that even if you are a child, that the human love from your parents are not there. It doesn't matter anymore. Why? Because you have a heavenly father who will never ever leave you under any condition. His faithfulness is everlasting faithfulness. And you can be assured. In 1 Samuel 17, it's amazing how David, 17 years old, in the field, and was already forgotten by the father Jesus.
But by that time, David came along. And David said that, who is that uncircumcised Philistine? That is there in the army of the living God. I will kill him. The news came to King Saul. King Saul said, David, you are just a little boy. He said, I'm not a little boy. Let me tell you, I'm not a little boy at all. In my rejection, God has prevented me. In my rejection, the Lord has taught me. In my rejection, God has taught me to kill lions. Let me tell you, maybe you are feeling rejected. Maybe the situations are not what it is. You think that no one is loving you. You are probably thinking that your case is over. The good news is that Jesus Christ is still watching over you. The Father is still watching over you and has such a great love for you. The Lord is preparing you. In your distress, God is preparing you. In your tribulations, God is preparing you. In your trials, God is preparing you. Let me tell you, a time is coming when every strength of all people are failing. Your time of preparation will be needed. Your time of training will be useful. Your time of distress will be the strength for the whole nation. What a wonderful God that we say. He is a father who will never reject you under any condition. So your responsibility. Jesus Christ, he taught us, he said that John 6, 9, he said, the other result of this, when you pray, say, our father, which are in heaven, and will be thy name. When you pray, say, our father, which are in heaven. My father, which are in heaven, and will be thy name. Before I bring my petition before God, I said, my father, my father, not somebody's father, my father. Heavenly Father might reject you. But your Heavenly Father will never ever reject you. Never. He loves you dearly. So what is your responsibility? Isaiah 26 and the verse is 3. Thou will keep in him. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusted in thee. If only you keep your mind focused on God through Jesus by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You see how the Trinity are working together. If only you will keep your mind on God the Father through Jesus Christ by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. The word is saying that. Keep you in peace. If you stay and keep your mind focused on Him, God will keep you in peace. When people are moving around and shouting, there is a casting down. You shall glorify God by saying that there is what? A lifting up. Because you have a Father. You have a Father. What a glorious work that Jesus Christ has done. By revealing God as a father, we are all moving around serving this God. And most people, their whole purpose is that said, One day, one day, I will live forever. One day, I will live forever. The tree of life that I couldn't have access, the tree of life that I was deceived from. It's hope for me to come back to that tree. And it is very true. It is very true. How can a man live everlasting life? Well, two choices. Some people are saying that everlasting life is when you find yourself in heaven. Let me tell you, the people that will go to hell, they will also live everlasting life in hell. So that's not the problem. That's not it. So then what is, what is everlasting life? 
John chapter 17 and the verses 3. Jesus Christ said, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Amen. Eternal life is not you living in heaven. Eternal life is you knowing God as a Father, the true God, and knowing Jesus Christ, that God the Father sent him as a son to say, Amen. It is the truth that we know that set us free. The truth will bring forth any barrier that you are coming out. Jesus Christ is not the way to heaven, but Jesus is the way to the Father. And it is confirmed here in John 14 and the verse 6. He said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the way to the Father. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the way to the Father. You are not living to go to heaven. You are living to find the way that will take you to the Father. Amen. Clearly. <laughs> That's wonderful. The love of the Father cannot fail. It's impossible. By the time that Satan thought that everything, your case was over, he cannot know what the Lord God was doing behind the scene. Jesus Christ was already sacrificed as the living, the living blood, because the blood that speaks and speaking better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of Abel is speaking vengeance when the blood of Jesus is speaking life. Amen. You will live because Jesus lived. Your life is a life of hope because your brother is hope. Because Jesus Christ now sitting on the right hand of the Father as a high priest, there is hope for your life. There is hope. You know what it means? Jesus clearly said it. He said, knowing that God is your Father, knowing that I am your brother, knowing that I am also a high priest as of today, we talk about it, how Jesus Christ is our high priest on the right hand of the Father. So Matthew 6, 34, Jesus said, Take therefore no thoughts for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thoughts of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Amen. It's like the time of manna. Don't take more than you need for the day. Because God is doing new things every single day. Stop being worried. Do not add the worries of tomorrow for the ones of the day. Already the ones of the day, the Lord said that don't worry about them on your responsibility. Push this yours upon my shoulder. The burdens, I am the one that carries the burdens. Your responsibility. If you feel like you are burdened, push them on my side. It is our responsibility to know that God is a father. God is our father. God is a father who will not suffer you to be tempted above that he are able. God is a father who will always make a way where there is no way. God is a father that when the enemy comes, morning, afternoon, evening, night, God is a faithful God. He will always slip up the countenance against you. God is the one that has called you for a wonderful life. And his whole purpose is to lead you to become 
more and more like Jesus. In your character, you become like Jesus. In your deeds, you become like Jesus. Perfection will come where Jesus is. That's where you will be. And where Jesus is, that's where our Father is. One day, this great family will come together unto the glory of the living God. May the Lord God bless you. Amen.